All right, so we're going to now blow up that internal sensory organ, the organ of corti. That's within the bony cochlea. And the organ of corti uh, is, uh, is, is this enter, so, so it's, the, it's the center, it's uh, borders on the bone, the central bone, uh, which is called the modiolus of the uh, cochlea, of the bony cochlea. And the outside part of it is the outer wall of the cochlea, where there's a, uh, a, a tissue called the stria vascularis. The stria vascularis of the cochlea is a very particular place that, has, that is going to do two unusual things. First of all, it's going to pump out a potassium-rich fluid. So outside of the cochlear duct, you have what's called um, paralymph, which is very similar to, say, extracellular fluid in the brain or extracellular fluid anywhere. Uh, and inside of the cochlear duct, you have what's called endolymph. And endolymph is different. It's different in two ways. First of all, it has a high concentration of potassium. There's no other place that has that high concentration of potassium. So this stria vascularis is pumping out potassium into the uh, into the endolymph that bays the entire cochlear duct. The second thing that the stria vascularis does, and this is actually more important even than the high concentration of potassium, is that it is it serves as a battery. It is going to charge this endolymph. It's going to create what's called an endocochlear potential, an endocochlear potential, which is on the order of plus 80 millivolts plus 80 millivolts. So normally the outside outside of a cell is at zero millivolts. It's at, at relative ground, close to ground. But here it's at plus 80 millivolts. That is going to have, uh, that's going to help us a lot once we get into how the hair cells respond. So just remember that. Now, if a person loses stria vascularis function or does not have it, they will be deaf because you need that own endocochlear potential in order to hear. And so here's where we start in on all the various molecules that have to be working in order for us to hear. If you do not have the specialized molecules that, that are present in the stria vascularis and you do not have an endocochlear potential, you cannot hear. Okay, so that is one of the uh, reasons why we get uh, uh, non-syndromic deafness, deafness that occurs without any other uh, problem. It's just deafness. It's just deafness because you've lost this stria vascularis. Now, in the uh, in the cochlear duct, there is the organ of co corti. This is a, this is like a Russian doll situation. We went from the cochlea to the cochlear duct, and now we're going to the organ of corti. In the organ corti there are the hair cells. Now, these are not neurons. These are hair cells. They are um, derived from placode, and they are sensory neurons that are, I'm sorry, they're not sensory neurons. They're sensory cells. They're not neurons. Sensory cells that, uh, that are going to release transmitter onto these spiral ganglion cells. So spiral ganglion cells, these are neurons, spiral ganglion neurons are coming from, uh, are, are coming from um, the placode, the otic placode, and they are going to receive neurotransmitter from this cell and send a series of action potentials into the brain. What you see is that there are two fundamentally different types of hair cells, red cells and blue cells. Nah, not really. Uh, the, the, this set out here that I've colored in red are the outer hair cells, and this one single row in here are the inner hair cells. Here's the weird thing. The inner hair cells are the ones that go to the brain. They're the only ones that go to the brain. These outer hair cells do not contact the brain. They, they in fact, receive information from the brain, but we're not, we, we won't talk about that. These outer hair cells are the cochlear amplifier. They are the, the, the play, that is the um, essence, or that is the physical substrate for how we amplify uh, sounds in, in, in the cochlea. And that's what, we're, that's what we'll 
we'll look at in a, in a moment. I want to point out a few things about this. The outer hair cells, uh, it, the, all the hair cells have a cell body, and then they have a, uh, a bunch of hair-looking things, which are not, in fact, hair. They're not hair at all. They're, they're actin uh, cilia-like structures. And they, uh, so this is a, but it's called a hair bundle. And this hair bundle is, it's embedded into the tectorial membrane. The hair bundle is embedded into the tectorial membrane, um, whereas the inner hair cells have a, a, a hair bundle that is free to move within the endolymph of the organ of Corti. The outer hair cells are, in, their hair bundle is embedded in the tectorial membrane, and here is another place where there are specific molecules that make up the tectorial membrane. Another place where if those molecules are mutated and do not operate, one can get syndromic deafness. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and look at how these hair cells respond and how the outer hair cells produce a, um, a, a, a how they amplify uh, the incoming stimulus.